Hi guys and welcome back to Kaifish Johnny. It is Kaifish Johnny, just a different setting today because we're going to be going through the Juicen mic microscope. The USB microscope that is very cheap on Amazon for like 20 quid and I'm going to scrape one of my fish, one of my koi because as we know we've had my shusu here flicking around so I'm a little bit worried about the parasites. I broke my old microscope, I opted for a quick fix. I'm not sure whether it's going to be the right or the wrong um, thing to use. I, I have spent a bit of time fiddling around this morning with it uh, or today with it and to see what we can do. So before I start I just wanted to go through or show you the little screen that I use that I nicked off someone else uh, just to identify what we could be looking for in this episode. As you can see there guys we've got all the all the regular parasites that you can find like Costia, Trichodina, uh, the flukes, the gill flukes, um, the anchor worm and basically what they will look like on the screen and a brief explanation from them like for instance the trichodina there central with the flying saucer up for that on the microscope and we're going to be looking for everything but this we're going to be looking for all these parasites but I think this is a great example of um, that someone put together to show the parasites and how they may look under the microscope. Okay guys, so back to it. This little juicer, this little juicer microscope, basically, here's one I unboxed earlier. So it comes as the microscope like this, and it plugs in with the USB port there. Uh, as I'm using a Mac, I have to convert that over. It's also got a light dimmer switch there that you just roll up and down. Um, and one thing I've been messing around with this morning with it is it's got the little groove here and it's got like 40 times zoom right down there and then flicking right round to 1000. I believe this is the focus mechanism. So that helps the microscope focus and this is the zoom, the zoom button. But when I've been pressing that zoom, we've not been zooming in very much, I can tell you that much. I'm a little bit skeptical of whether we can achieve anything with this little thing. But nonetheless, we're going to go and do a little scrape. I have looked at a few things like my desk under the microscope and it has shown in quite a good bit of clarity what's there. The problem that I'm finding with this is unlike two problems. One is compared to my other microscope, you can't move the slide effectively underneath without interfering with the microscope, be it on this little stand that you pop it into like this. If you lean this too far over one way, it tilts and it falls. It's not the most stable of bases. It's not particularly heavy to hold this weight angling out to that side. So one thing I've found is it's flicking to the side. See if I can do an example now. So if I put that there, and you can see straight away, the wire's just pulled it over to the side. So the wire needs to be set to the back. Let's plug it in now before we have a go. So you can see there, as soon as I've plugged it in, the light has come straight on to enable us to do um, the check-in. So, but I'll just move this uh, screenshot to the side so then we can see the screen. So you can see there on the Mac, because I'm using a Mac and that's my screen for my day-to-day -day work. Um, the application that you've got to use when you're using the Mac is PhotoBooth. Now I have seen uh, some people online on YouTube when I've been doing my research, using Windows and there seems to be a lot more buttons that you can press in relation to things. But on this it's quite basic, so all we've got here is a screenshot that I took earlier of the desk. The effects, we don't want effects, we just want to look for parasites, so we don't need the effects that this brings up like bulge, dent, twirl, mirror, stretch, fish eye, Whatever it wants to do, we're not interested in that. We literally want to be looking for parasites. So I don't know why it's offering that. It might be something that's built into the Mac as a little feature. So if we go back out of that, back to the microscope. So I'm just going to quickly go back to the desk again. So you can see how fiddly this is. I'm trying to stop it falling over at the same time as trying to sort of, now I'm going to be twisting this knob. It's going to be going all over the show. Like you can see that it's, it's quite difficult to operate definitely on the stand. I found it easier, to be honest, operating it not on the stand because I've got to hold the base there to stop it falling over. I've got to concentrate on what I'm looking at. You can see I'm trying my best to find some type of image of the desk there. So if you can see that on the screen, 
So I'm just going to hold that down because obviously if I let go of it, it will fall out of place, which isn't ideal. So I'll pick you up now and show you what I can see on the screen. Now I have a nice oak desk. Um, it's like polished on the top, so you can see there, there's a little bit of varnish, one second. You can see what I can see, that's my desk. So if I look down at my desk, like this, you can see what the desk sort of looks like, but under the microscope, it's showing this, which is great because I can see the desk in depth that I can't see with the naked eye. But the problem is with that, it doesn't tell you what magnifica magnification you're at. It doesn't say you set at 400, you set at 200, you set at 100. You, it, you just got to fiddle around with it. And the fo I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe that's just the focus setting on there. And why it's got the, the up to 1000 on one direction and down to 40 on the other, I don't know. And then, in, like I say, this is supposed to be the zoom button here on this side. You have to excuse my phone because I'm in my office. I have a couple of phones, they go off like mad. Um, so if I press zoom, which again, interferes with it. We're not zooming anywhere. We're not, we're not looking at anything more. So anyway, I'm gonna go down now. I'm gonna take my trusted Costco card and I'm gonna scrape the shoe to it and get some slime, put them in between these slides and we're gonna get it under the microscope and see miraculously if we can find anything. So let's go down to the pond. Okay guys, so we're down at the pond. I'm gonna be going to uh, get my fishnet now, get the bowl, get the shoe suey bowled up um i've got my little card there ready to scrape the fish are quite low so the behavior has changed um a little bit recently so this is also another an influencing factor in the decision to get them out have a little scrape have a little rummage around and see what we can find just looking over the top there there's the little shoe sewer we're going to be going for just underneath winston the orange one that blue one just underneath we're going to be getting that one out and we're going to be giving it a little scrape. So I'll check back to you in a little bit and hopefully we'll have, well we will have, a load of slime on this card so then we can get it under that little microscope and see what, what we can achieve with it. Hi guys and welcome back. So we managed to achieve that, we got the mucus, we did a little scrape, it was nice and easy. I didn't actually take the uh, shoe suey, the blue, out of the pond. Uh, I just did it in the net, it was nice and relaxed. Um, it went really, really well. I've literally just took the mucus off the Costco card and onto the slide. So now I'm going to pop it, the other slide, on top of that slide, compress it. There's a little bit of water on there just to allow the parasites to move around, if there are any parasites there. And then I'm just going to fiddle around for ages, um, trying to see if I can see anything at all with this microscope. So I have to turn the computer on for that. Okay, so locked and loaded. Let's get this one on top of the other one. There we go. Well, there's a lot more on there than I thought. So what I'm using is these slides, just glass slides. They're nice enough, there's 50 in there, so I'm not gonna go without for a long, long time. Maybe if someone wants one that's local, I've got your slide. But back to the microscope. So what we're gonna do, we've got the, we've got the Mac on, we've got the TV on, a nice big setup here, so then I'll be able to see, hopefully, what we can see. Right, so another point about this is, um, the calibration to set it up to the magnification that I mentioned before, it just isn't as quick and easy as using the other microscopes where you just whip it round, it's preset, it's set as a lot of settings, you can just do it. You have to use this, which if you can see it, it's called a microscope micrometer calibration ruler. Okay, so I did a little Google of that and Jesus Christ on earth, you have to work out this. So ocular meters and lots of different words I've never come across because I'm not a microscope dude, I'm not a scientist, I just want to know if my fish is okay and he's, whether he's healthy. So I have to learn that. Ocular meters, I like maths, but 10 times that's huge. And you can see this is just extremely confusing compared to the ease of having a preset microscope. So there is another negative associated with this. But So for 20 quid, you're saving money, but you're losing time because you have to calibrate and do all this lot. Plus the zoom button doesn't work on mine, so God knows what we'll find. Okay, down to it. In we go. So, let me zoom in down into this. Oh, actually we can see, like that's quite interesting because I don't know if you can see my screen because 
Uh, there's a big reflection on it and that's the light coming off it, but we're going to need it. It is actually showing up a few little bits, which is quite cool. So let me try and calibrate this or bring it into focus or whatever it wants to do. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down that bulb so it isn't as glaringly bright. So there's a little switch here, I'll just lower it down. There we go. Well, that's not very good, but just a little bit of summit there and see what we can find. So I found summit there, if you can see on the picture, or I haven't found something, I've just got it into focus. I can see some of the tiny little speckles there, a little line going across the top. So we're just going to go round and see if we can see anything moving. I don't know what zoom we're at because I, I don't can't read that calibration thing. Uh, so I'm just, we're just literally hitting and hoping with this. Oh, Professor Johnny. What are you doing? <laughs> just looking for anything moving around too. It's a lot harder on this microscope. You can't see that with a human eye because it's like zoomed in quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, even though I've got 25 vision, which is better than 2020 vision. Twice as good. The zoom button doesn't work. Okay guys, so I've just spent literally about 30, 40 minutes wandering around there. I can't find anything. There isn't anything visible. My zoom button doesn't work on the side, uh, which is probably what you get for paying 20 quid for a microscope. Um, I ain't able to see anything, find anything. Just feels like, to be honest, a waste of time. Should have just bought an Apex one. I've just bought one now, an Apex one recommended off my friend online on, on here on youtube open ears um we've we managed to get a good apex uh, microscope and we'll be able to find the parasites if there are any with that so in my conclusion to using this juice and juice and digital usb microscope would i recommend it um for koi keeping absolutely not if that zoom button works, maybe it might have had a chance. Maybe I've just got one rare defective, I don't know. But on my experience of buying this microscope, looking for parasites on my computer, using photo booth on my Mac, uh, I can't find a goddamn thing, and I wouldn't find a goddamn thing if I spent the entire day just looking through that. It's impossible. Um, it is. It, it could be so much better, because if it had the magnification, up on the screen like on there just like you're at 100 you're at 400 or 200 and then you could scoot round and see that would be fantastic because then you would know what setting you're at you know what what you're looking at what if you're looking for like costia or whatever you know where you want to be at you, and you can spend some good time knowing that you're running around on the correct um magnification for what you're looking for and you if you can find it you find it and if you don't find it you know it's not got it your car ain't got it or your scrape wasn't good enough and to have another go at it but in general i ain't going to be able to use that this micro uh, calibration meter i mean i could do but i haven't got enough time in my day to sit down and work out exactly how to use this um so in a nutshell i just i would not buy this this is going to go in the bin unless someone wants it for free um that microscope stand is flimsy lightweight useless it's a shame really it's a real big shame because that could have been a really good bit of kit for people that don't have um endless amounts of cash not that i have endless amounts of cash because i definitely didn't i bought a second hand microscope so don't cut any corners guys with your microscope this isn't going to work for you and even if you're not looking for koi parasites Unless you're just looking for a one setting microscope to have a little scoop round with the kids maybe. Maybe I might keep it for the kids because it's quite interesting with the kids maybe looking at 2Ps, 5Ps, bits of interest like that. that They can have a little zoom and understand maybe the basics of a microscope. But anything other than that I definitely wouldn't be, uh, I won't, this won't be partaking in any further Koi Fish Johnny episodes. Nor, in, uh, nor will I be using it for anything that Koi related going forward. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it brings you something to you. And I hope you've enjoyed the second Hawaiian shirt on Koi Fish Johnny, the pink flamingo, baby. So please like, please subscribe to the channel. We're growing every single day. I am super grateful. It brightens up my day every, day, every time I see a new subscriber come on board and basically say that I'm doing a decent job. So thank you very much. Take care. Happy Koiing.